welcome back to the Rift Guys Wild Rift video. It's your favorite rank 1 Inter in Wild Rift, me Kirk, and today we're going to take a look at the newly buffed Master Yi. This champion has been pretty bad in the past, however what they're doing right now with this champion is giving him Katarina-esque reset mechanics, and after watching this video you'll understand that this is going to be absolutely crazy. All the new items, the changes to his kit, the reset mechanic on his second ability, and just simply the auto attack resets that are being more fluid now and actually functional, make this champion a lot better in games he was already good in, meaning in low crowd control games. If the enemy team has any burst damage, you can now utilize Meditate very well, like the Garen second ability, to avoid most of the incoming damage. So, let's take a look at what he does during this game to actually snowball his lead, win the game, and absolutely roll over the opposition. Here we see a Kalista Lulu bot lane, a Jace mid lane, and a Twisted Fate top lane. The Twisted Fate lane, the top lane, is a very peculiar occurrence, but yeah. Look at the look look at how much damage he actually does during the jungle clear. It's completely underrated. And having the auto tech reset on the E is actually such a massive game changer. Because think about this. Giving yourself an auto tech reset might not look like a big deal, but if you look at the highest level gameplay, if you look at the highest level competition, and just think about the difference it makes to gain one additional auto attack for literally free, especially around the um second ability, uh, third ability stack. And if you combine the meditate into this, you quickly realize how much more damage you gain and how much more tankiness you gain with all of this, making it so difficult for the enemy to one tap you. And he does a five cam clear before scuttle is even a thing. Well, just at the right time when scuttle is a thing. And Lee Sin is still on his jungle clear. For some reason, the Yasu was here around the corner, but the Twisted Fate can't for copies too low HP. You see that on the minimap. And the, the Master is thinking, okay, do I go for a tactical reset here, or do I just uh, claim my Croc Camp? He's deciding for the Croc Camp, and the wave in bot lane, I don't know how it looks like. Okay, it's okay, it's not the worst. Leeson being spotted on the top side, Scuttle, for like a brief millisecond. And now we look for a potential counter gank. He's now pathing to the top side of the map. The Yona is uh, being thrown away by the Jace. Masi transitioning here, transitioning over to the Lee Sin side. I don't know if they really want to force an early fight like this. I don't know why the Yona is even walking. It doesn't really make any sense because look, look at the animation cancel I was talking about. But there's too much damage. Nice combo, but he still falls. Not too sure what Dayana was trying to achieve here because this trade is so much more worth for the Master Yi. He wanted to go base anyway and now they get the kill and the assist gold as well as playthings for mid lane. Plus they deny at least one or two minions. So I don't really know what Dayana was thinking here. But I think generally like even that the Master Yi dies doesn't really matter. But that the Jace now dies really I don't understand what little bro was doing there. Because he was given such a free thing with what Master Yi has done for him. That I don't do not really understand as to why he just threw away all this instantly. Like he could have even just reset instantly after the play, like before even going for the play, and just be there on tempo, just completely deny everything, being back on the map with the master E as well. So I really don't understand. But maybe he goes for another play on the other side of the map up here, but he doesn't have ultimate, and no ultimate on Master E is a very feels bad at the moment. You see the red dot on the map with the Yone Ghost, and he can't really reach right now. So he has to go back and farm it up. Going also for a Blade Rush, he doesn't want to go for early boots, and Master Yi is more of a farming champion. You can brawl if you want to in the earlier stages, yes, you have the damage, however you have to be mechanically very clean. And you might be saying like, Master Yi and mechanics? But think about what I just mentioned. Your second ability has a 90% damage mitigation for I think 0.5 or 1 second, which is very vital when it comes to burst combos during the early game. Not only this, you have auto attack resets on your third ability and your second ability if I'm not mistaken, and utilizing this is very very important to maximize your damage and minimize the incoming damage. The enemy bot lane is to be is expected to run over ours because we have Kalista and Lulu and they have Yumi and Lucian. So losing is not really that unexpected, but we have a very massive spike in the base. Like maybe he gets a little pick here with the enemy griefing. What's over the wall? Q's over because the enemy makes a big mistake for going for this play. Goes for another Q, is behind the tower, gets the kill with the smite and pieces out. And probably goes for another little off. No, he doesn't. And now we have a... I really don't understand though why he isn't resetting now. 
Like, I don't understand why he just doesn't reset. Goes for the Q, tries to avoid the kick into the face. By the way, in case you didn't know, on Master Yi, to my knowledge, you can actually, if you time it perfectly and get kind of lucky, Q his kick. And then it just vanishes. But I think you need to be very, very lucky. If if there's a Master Yi, like, like Giga Gamer in the comment section, please tell me about your experiences with um, Lee Sin and Master Yi, how many times it actually did work out for you. Because alternatively, you have your second ability to mitigate the incoming damage, but you only mitigate the kick's damage, not the damage of the Q afterwards. So you can, to my knowledge, mitigate most of the damage, especially if you play with QSS, you can even deny the, comp the, the dislocation, making yourself, well, an immovable object, which then, in trade, uh, will certainly kill the Lee Sin, because your DPS is a lot higher than Lee Sin's DPS. But now the enemy is slowly coming up to this dragon here, they do not want to give this for free, the Yasu is being spot on the bottom side here, they try to collapse onto the Yasu, the Master E gets knocked up, CC'd, knocked up, knocked up, knocked up, knocked up, and CC'd again. He could have done this a lot better from my perspective. Like, if he gets off an Alpha Strike, like, what he can do, for example, in the later stages of the game, when you walk to brushes, right, and you know the enemy team has CC, do yourself a favor and literally just spam your first ability. The reason is, the moment they will then de-stealth or the fog of war, de-stealth is maybe the wrong word, they most of the time will do so with CC, right? And what you can do then is you utilize your Alpha Strike to avoid the initial CC to not just get instantly killed. Because once you're in the first CC, you might get CC chained into death. Gets a nice little kill here. Harold not being taken away is such a weird thing. Lulu now buffing up the Master Yi, also a very deadly combo. Because the pig's damage is absolutely insane. And Master Yi is technically speaking a melee range 80 carry. Melee range 80 carry who doesn't really go crit, but I wonder, like I really wonder if there's a way or a world in which you go uh, Infinity Edge Master Yi now. I can actually imagine this and I do not want to, to be honest. But yeah, Master Yi as a champion has an addiction to camps and once you have these camps on lockdown, and you, you get this consistent gold income, you just you just brawl. I assume um, he will start upping the tempo by a lot the moment he gets the Terminus item, and then the Lulu hopefully just walks after him. Because with the Lulu, they're like an, an, inc an insane duo. Lulu needs to buff him right now, and it's it's over. Lee Sin is spitting apart. Lulu, come on, buff him. Lulu, hello. <sighs> like, honestly, I don't know why the Lulu isn't just buffing him earlier. Like, why just pop the ult 15 years late, but now you get the reset mechanic, the meditate, the nice Q avoiding certain death, another meditate coming in, another Q coming in as well, and here's another meditate to avoid certain death, and this is the reset mechanic I'm talking about. And now imagine the Lulu buffs him with everything earlier, just gives him the second ability, the third ability, and then just lets him run into the enemy with hyper speed because of the bonus movement has been an attack speed, and ardent, and then everything is a lot easier. I, I do not understand what some Lulus are thinking, but uh, I think we are all very much familiar with the Lulu problem. That they're using the cooldowns for we never know what reason actually. Nice bounty being collected here, another 300 gold into the pockets of the Master Yi. Terminus are being able to be completed in the base, making himself a lot stronger. Meanwhile, the Jace is brawling with the Yana in the Wolf Pit. They're not having it. Now he's going for more HP and armor with the power of Randon's Omen. But I think, honestly, maybe right now going for Death Stance would probably be a better choice than going for Randon's. Because Randon's forces you to be crit to provide you any value and then you need to hit or wait until the item heals you. Death Stance provides you with uh, a burst quote-unquote protection because it turns the burst damage into a damage over time effect. Considering you have a Lulu and your second ability that resets on kill with Triumph, I think it's a very good investment to go for Death Stance over Randuins and then maybe 
go for randoms after. And once you have these items, I think uh, you can look into buying a Serx Gauge because Serx Gauge is also a very cool item nowadays with removing CC once the shield procs and granting a big shield. The enemy walks too close, Masi pops the ultimate, runs them down, Master the Lee Sin tries to go for a big play, Runs after Lee Sin, the Lee Sin is on the move here, Lulu buffs dissipate, gets the kill, now goes for the Yone, pops the Meditate to avoid burst damage, avoids the knockup but with the first ability, and it's just a Q spam simulator once you're too fed. Yeah, the two item expectation turns out to be true. Now the Yasu tries to be here, we see a lot of big damage. Pops the meditate relatively early but can't continue the chase because the next Q will actually give him the knockup and then he needs to be really mindful to not get CC'd and then killed by the Yasuo because the Yasuo still deals a lot of damage. Now with the Randoids being picked up, we are a lot tankier but Randoids doesn't reduce crit damage anymore, it just gives you a buff that then converts into healing if you hit an enemy champion with an auto attack. Whereas DD doesn't mitigate any damage you take, it just staggers the damage you take. Gonna going in, goes after with the jump here, needs to be really careful, gets kicked away, will certainly fall, no, the Lulu helps him, now the reset mechanic is coming in, popping the plant, popping the meditate, on the hunt now, runs at the Yone, Yone now at the risk of dying, the Yumi will not be enough, the Yone has to come back, meditate being popped to just get some extra HP, Yone used the ultimate, the fate sealed or unsealed, to just try and get something done, but the Masti is just too strong at this point. The two item power spike into the three item domination spike is simply too overbearing for the enemy team to deal with. And I'm wondering, um, I hope he doesn't complete the anti-healing. I hope he only buys the component and then looks for another item. Ah. Uh. Because I, I don't really see why one would ever complete the anti-healing item unless you want the biggest spike possible for an objective. Because it doesn't really do too much for you apart from the anti-healing and getting a 10% more potent anti-healing compared to another full item that's more functional in other departments is such a waste. Doesn't QSS early to the night a kick, now runs down the leasing, gets the kill, gets the first reset, the enemy Yumi pops ultimate, he's inside of the backline, gets exhausted, pops the QSS, gets a kill, gets another one, gets the reset, gets another one, and the Lulu is taking up a little bit of the damage and he just walks it off into the sunset while the Yone is somehow at their red buff. The only damage going He just yoinked that one. Criminal. Only the Yone and the Yumi being alive. This Nash will be taken almost instantly. Hopefully the Lulu gives us the buff on cooldown, so we're actually getting something done. No, but the Lulu shields herself rather than the Master Yi while abusing the safe spot. The classic. Looking at Starek's gauge right now. Item is very powerful on Master Yi, so you should always have that on your radar. It's very, very good. For some reason, the Twisted Fiddler is enjoying his time on the side lane, dying to the Lee Sin. Classic. Lucia needs to be really careful, because, yeah. Like, you can just go there and pop all spells. And just one tap you. Ooh, this Nexus might be a little bit too far, but no, it actually isn't. Look at the DPS, excuse me? <laughs> did you see the damage he just did? I would have never expected this to happen. Lee Sin kicks, he just has to press Q. Look, he is smart enough to just spam Q just in case the Lee Sin takes the Q. This is what I mean. The overall awareness of some things and then playing it properly, using the Q to reset the aggro of the Nexus to another person, and now blasting away at the Nexus, will it be enough? Will they actually be able to finish this game? I do not think so. Why is the Lulu ulting herself? I do not understand what she's doing. Like, <laughs> if you remember the Lux from the other game, and now the Lulu from this game, make it make sense. Please, by death stance, bro. What? What? Why do we have a Serpent's Fang? Okay. The enemy team might have shielding, correct? But would you rather cut down the enemy shielding and have 200 less shielding on them because of the value of the shielding or have 
a 33% higher life pool against burst damage when you're already killing them and getting more and more resets playing into the reset mechanic of your triumph. I, I don't, I do not think this is a good idea to go for Serpents. Because this would not even have been remotely close with Death Stance. Not even remotely. So yeah. Please take a look at your items and what your items do. Because this is very, very, like, this was just a for fun play. But again, if he doesn't have Serpent's Fang, but Death Stance, all of this turns out completely different. So keep that one in mind. And don't punish yourself. Because now I can use the downtime to focus on um, a little, a few things about items. Number one, I do not necessarily think that the Randon's Omen is a very good purchase that you need to go for. I rather think that the DD into Starex would have been a way better purchase this game. And then for your last item, you can look into anything you need, maybe even more HP on an item or anything, but. Generally speaking, the only way you get killed, I think, is get bursted. And giving yourself a higher HP bar with, for example, Death Stance, makes it, well, borderline impossible with the power of a little next to you to die. Because the moment you jump in, the least has to instantly kick you, because if he doesn't, he dies. So you jump in with Alpha Strike, you can then press QSS and run after them. If the Lee Sin doesn't react fast enough, then there'll also be a Lulu shield, uh, like, uh, uh, avail on you, making it very difficult for the enemy to get anything done, and... Every single, like, half a second, one second on an enemy champion with the damage you have right now is already close to being enough to get them killed. Oh, he does what I say! He spams the Alpha Strike while walking to brushes. That was a big shot blast. They just get the free pick on the Yasuo, and losing the Yasuo is such a big thing because they have the two wind shitters. And having this combo would allow them to just go in with press R, and then the Yasuo follows up with ult as well. And then they have a big problem because it's just a big, massive Vombo combo. And obviously avoiding this is key to success because it's just simply too much. Lee flashing away from the Jace here. Jace playing for time, dying though, but I think it's okay that he dies in the way he did, denying the enemy entry. You could argue that you want the enemy to come and just fight them and kill them, um, which is also a valid point, I believe. But if he goes there with the idea that they don't want to fight for whatever reason, and he just stalls for time and tries to just kill the Lee Sin because he forced the Lee Sin flash and just got a little bit greedy afterwards from what we saw on the minimap, I think it's an okay thing to do. But Lulu needs to uh, get her things fixed and sit on that Master Yi, because that Master Yi is her, her ticket to plus one LP. Twisted Fate popping the ultimate, porting on the wave here, not trying to even deny the Lulu needs to speed buff him. Like, the Lulu doesn't really want to participate in this game, does she? I mean, not that it would have made a difference, like, outcome-wise, as you see, like, there was no difference, but maybe something else could have happened, now the Lulu gets caught and gets instantly one tap because, yeah, I I really... May maybe, maybe the Callista's playing with both devices at the same time, you never know. But for, like, people will actually think, nice, jump onto the Lee Sin, Lee Sin kicks him into the face, has to walk away, the Lee Sin is on 1 HP, pops the Meditate to avoid some burst damage, gets exhausted by the Lucian, has to be really careful, is not the strongest right now. You see, the, the Rana's Omen isn't really doing too much, and having no death stance right now is also not doing him too much of a favor. Like, two of these items, or three of these items he has, are not really performing too well. Masi in the side lane here, look like looking for potential play. Lucian trying to go for a big combo de deals a decent amount of damage to him. Has to press the recall button. The enemy will certainly get the L done. This game is actually still winnable for the opposing side. Please, yes, he sells the serpent's shit fang and goes for a real item. Now they will actually win. They will actually win. Oh, Lee Sin, you do not want to jump here. Yeah, I thought so. That would have been certainly suicide, my man. I do not know if they really want to have a fight with Elder. Like, they want to stall as long as possible or maybe get a pick somewhere. 
but going for an all-out fight here, if the enemy is clustered, you will get blown up by the Elder, and you certainly do not want that to happen. Lulu, you need to stick on... For some reason, Yonet does this, doesn't make any sense what he just did. Death Stance popping up as per usual. The enemy team, the Goon Squad, had now has arrived, and the Twisted Face trying to defend against the Lee Sin, and the Lee Sin is uh, being dangerously close to just killing him. Now the Yasu is overextended and has no way to escape, will certainly fall as well. I, I really don't understand what some of them are thinking, because it really doesn't make any sense. Like, the Yasuo just ran it down, all he had to do was AFK and wait for the Lee. Like, he just didn't have to show, like, push this deep. And then the Lee Sin gets everything for free up there, and if people show on the Lee Sin, he just goes for another push, for another wave. But now they've basically given them a major opportunity to get the next Nasher, because it's very difficult for this team to walk in without proper assistance. Nasher now being spawned, they can even rush it if they want to, or even force the enemy to come. Elder only, like, 12 seconds left. You need to be really careful. Elder, Elder dealing 104 damage? Is it because... Does somebody have Riftmaker? Hmm? Oh no, it, I'm, I'm stupid. It was the Death Stance. It just... It, because it's it's calculated in true damage. My bad. My bad. And in general, like... How much do you actually spend, t like, time... Reading items? You're only going over, he needs to be careful, if he queues after him, he just might bring him here as well. Death Stance popping off, Lulu flashes over the wall to save him, it will actually be enough, the Death Stance providing him with enough safety, now walks off again, gets another Meditate reset, looks for a potential play, gets a healing from Death Stance, tries to queue to the backline, gets a Meditate reset on the burst damage, gets knocked up by the Yasuo, but the Yasuo is stunned, the Death Stance popping off, you see the Death Stance is literally carrying this game, with the Lulu flashing over the wall, saving him, but it was a very risky play to actually Alpha Strike the Yone, because well, yeah, the Yonah will go back to his ghost, and if you're in in inside of five people, you just disappear instantly. But Death Stance finally doing what it needs to do, because this item needed to be bought earlier. And then this game would have been a lot easier, people. Items do matter sometimes, even though nowadays it's uh, a lot less, a lot different, but still. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and please check out that channel in the description below. They post high quality content of high quality players, and you'll never be bored of watching these gamers play absolute mad games, absolute crazy gameplay. And the most beautiful thing is, imagine you could play on the server and actually play 5Q, 2Q, 3Q around the clock whenever you want without waiting one hour. By the way, last day I waited one hour and 30 minutes for a Duo Q game of Emerald and Diamond. And yeah, they say MMR doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it does, and it's terrible. Well, and here you have some items. Enjoy the items, always showcasing at least a few of the top tier builds. And with that, we end the video. Thank you for watching and see you soon for more content.